Welcome to the Prelude Hymn Sing for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Our first hymn will be Praise and Thanksgiving, ELW 689. Our second hymn this morning is, Lord, Take My Hand and Lead Me, ELW 767. Our third hymn this morning is You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, Gift of Finest Wheat, 
ELW 484. The fourth and final hymn will be Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult, ELW 696.
ninth Sunday after Pentecost, celebration from Light of Christ Lutheran Church of the United Proclamation of the Gospel Parish in Bethlehem, PA. I'm Rosalie Aducci, and I'll be serving as the assisting minister for today's worship as Pastor Suzanne Trump serves as our presiding minister. We want to thank Linda Mall for sharing her gifts of music with us. We also thank Rich Hawk, our live stream ministry coordinator, and our socially distanced singers. But most of all, we thank you for joining us during this holy time. Today is the first of five Sundays with gospel readings from John 6, the first four of which focus on Jesus as bread of life. Today, Jesus feeds thousands of people with five loaves and two fish. What we have, what we bring to Jesus' table, seems like it is not nearly enough to meet all of the needs we see around us. But it is not the adequacy of our supplies or our skills that finally makes the difference. It is the power of Jesus working in the littlest and least to transform this world into the world God desires, a world where all the hungry are satisfied. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with our prelude music.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. It, it is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. Our gathering song for this day is Praise the Lord, O Heavens, from the ELW 823. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Second Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hun hundred people? So Elisha repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. And he set it before them, they ate 
and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us continue with Psalm 145. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They They shall shall tell of the glory of your kingdom kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom kingdom is is an everlasting everlasting kingdom. kingdom. Your Your dominion dominion endures throughout all all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are nearer to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. A reading from Ephesians. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, we may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. So I will call up all my young friends to uh, come up closer to the screen. Uh, So I have a question for you this day. Are you afraid of anything? Are you afraid of anything, Miss Rosalie? Uh, A few things. Yeah, me too. Yep, yep, yep. Snakes. I don't don't like snakes. I don't like snakes either. I don't really like any reptiles, so I try to avoid them. If I'm at the zoo, I don't go to that house. (laughs) I'm also sometimes a little bit afraid of the dark. Are you ever afraid of the dark? Or do you have any other things you're afraid about? When I'm afraid, because it's dark, well, sometimes I turn a light on. That's a pretty good thing to do, right? Turn a light on, then it's not dark, then you're not afraid. Sometimes it's, it's still kind of dark and that you don't have the ability to turn on a light. And then you know what I do? I pray. And I say to God to just keep me safe. I say to God, just help me to not be afraid. And just get me through this moment. In a minute, I'm going to read a story from the Bible. And towards the end of the story, the disciples were afraid because they didn't know what was happening. And that's a lot of times when we're afraid, when we don't know what's happening. But Jesus reminds us to trust God and know that everything will work out okay. 
may not always be the way we want it, and it may not always happen as fast as we want it. But with God, we trust that God's in control and things will be okay. And if we're fearful, if we're afraid, we can always pray and know that God is with us always. Here's our prayers and is right there with us in whatever we fear. So then I feel a lot better about the dark because I know that I'm not alone, but God is with me. So I hope if you have a, a time that you're afraid, that you'll pray, that you'll pray to God and ask God to be with you, to guide you, to love you, and to keep you safe. And I know that God will do that. Thank you. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. By what are they but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, and so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed those to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force, to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I was reading the other day of a reflection that was written by uh, the late uh, Secretary of the United Nations, General Dag Hammarskjöld. And he said, Each morning we must hold out the chalice of our being to receive, to carry, and to give back. 
And I think these scriptures today kind of open a door for us to think about how we are nourished and sustained by God and also how we might be vessels of God that are now open to service. How we might be ordinary gifts and ordinary people. How we might be, for this community, signs of God's love. And how God's mercy is multiplied as we care for our neighbors, for our community, and the world. It's through our learning, through our giving, and our proclamation of who Jesus Christ is, that we are, ex are invited to experience what does it mean to be rooted in God's sustaining love and to see God and proclaim God who invites us and everyone into this unimaginable vision of abundance. You know, um, I don't know how many of you know this, but there's actually a Broadway a musical. It's called Come From Away. And if you think back to 9-11, which is coming up on the 20-year anniversary, yeah, it would yeah, be, right? 20. Yep. Because um, it was <clears throat> September 11th, 2001. And you might remember as the, um, the planes were attacking the World Trade Center, um, as they were attacking the Pentagon and trying to attack the Capitol, um, uh, eventually when, when people realized what was happening, they diverted all the planes that were coming into the United States or around, and they just wanted them out of harm's way. And so they landed in a little tiny town called Gander, and it's in Newfoundland, Canada. And that little community housed, fed, and entertained 7 thousand, 7,000 stranded passengers from around the world. And I, I really do want to see this musical because, like, imagine, like, you are just in your house and, you know, you have your family, and suddenly, like, a hundred people descend upon you, and they, they need food, and they need a place to lay their head, and they need some comfort, because everybody's scared at this point, right? It's September 11th. We're not sure exactly what's going on, but we know it's bad and it's serious. And so <clears throat> that's kind of like this little community. It, it, I don't even think there were 7,000 people in the whole community, and now they have 7,000 scared, hungry, passengers from airlines, and they did it. They took care of everyone. And I think that's a really powerful, real-life example of what Jesus is doing in today's Gospel reading. The story of Jesus feeding the multitude is told actually six times in the four Gospels. And John's account, which fills chapter 6, was probably written about 100 um, CE, common era. And the attention of the fourth evangelist gives the story um, is probably related to how important the weekly meal was becoming in the assembly. In John, the loaves are barley, which was the bread of the poor. 
as well as the bread we heard in the Elijah story. And by setting this uh, feeding of the multitudes by the Passover, when the Messiah was expected to appear, Jesus is using the story to tell of the uh, expectation that Jesus was the Messiah. And this expectation that there would be a banquet when the Messiah comes was, was told about in this story, obviously. You know, you have five barley loaves and two fish, and there's 5,000 people, which actually would have been a lot more because they only really counted the men, so there were women and children. <clears throat> so imagine that. Five barley loaves, two fish. You feed all those people, and you have 12 baskets left over. And then you have Jesus crossing the sea by walking on water, which recalls, of course, the story of the Exodus. And so we have God's abundance clearly demonstrated. And we also have with that, interestingly enough, Jesus walking on water, which really terrified the disciples. So we have this sense of abundance and this sense of fear. Now, I was uh, in a conversation recently um, talking about people in our community who are homeless. And I was encouraged to go on the web and look at a community in Austin, Texas, called Community First. And this was actually started by, <coughs> excuse me, a group, and they are called Loaves and Fishes. So how appropriate is that? So anyway, what they did was they said, you know what, we've, we've got people who don't have a place to live. We've got people who are hungry. So we're going to build a community. And they built a community, and there's tiny homes, which I don't know if you've heard about, but it's like literally a tiny home. Mm -hmm. It's very small. Um, it doesn't have a kitchen. It doesn't have a bathroom. But everything else is right there. And so they, they built a bunch of tiny homes, and then they built some communal kitchens and some communal uh, bathroom facilities and showers and stuff. And they built um, gathering spots within this community where the people could gather. Because what they really found was that more than anything else, people want relationships. That people want to be in relationship with each other. And this community is really kind of unique in that the people who were homeless that now live in a tiny house have to actually work. And their work contributes um, to the good of the community. So they have a sense of ownership. So it's not that they have just been given a, a meal, just been given a place to live, but they have been given back their self-esteem their sense of dignity. And they have been given a community filled with relationships. And the really cool thing about this community is that anybody can go there. They have RVs that are set up, and they kind of act like a hotel. So anybody can go in and be a part of this community because it's all about relationships. It's all about taking what we don't even see as abundance, but really is God's abundance. Because we are so focused on scarcity, on I need to make sure I have enough for me. And God is saying to us, you have more than you need. And so here we have Jesus modeling this for us. 
that when Jesus is walking towards his disciples, what is their response? It is fear. Because don't we think of things that we don't know? Isn't our initial response fear? If there's an unfamiliar person or an unfamiliar idea or an unfamiliar event, we tend to go, "Mm." it's out of fear, it's out of concern, it's out of we think, oh, that must be wrong. And everything that we know that's familiar to us in our minds gets labeled as right. And Jesus really challenges this. And I think when you think about the folks in Gander, they really challenge that. Because they didn't know these people. They were literally coming in from all over the world, which literally means they probably did not even speak the same language. And they could have been very fearful. And they could have shut their doors and kept to themselves, but that's not what they did. They extended hospitality. They extended a warm warm welcome and embraced the folks, the travelers along the way. The community first in Austin, Texas, could have said, Well, we're going to build this for the homeless because they're not like us. And we're going to put them there, and then we don't have to think about them or see them or interact with them. That's exactly the opposite of what they did. They built community. They built relationships. Because at the end of the day, someone who is homeless and someone who has a house are no different. We're still God's people. We're still God's beloved sons and daughters. So we are going to be embarking on some town hall meetings. We are going to throw out some ideas which are going to be new. They're going to be unfamiliar. They're going to be different. They're going to be challenging to us. And and as new ideas and thoughts are presented as possibilities, I think this gospel challenges us to look at the abundance that God has given us. To look at the abundant love, the abundant resources, to think back to this feeding of the 5,000 five loaves of barley bread, and two fishes. And see that, you know, with God, everything really is possible. So my hope and my prayer for us is that we don't come to the town hall meetings with a sense of fear, of scarcity, of protecting our own but rather we come with a sense of, look at the abundant riches God has given to us. And how can we use those riches to build community far beyond our community of faith? Can we put our fears aside and recognize that God's in control and there is more Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join with us as we sing the hymn of the day, The Church of Christ in Every Age, from the ELW 729. Really pay attention to the words as we sing.
us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations, especially Cathedral Church of the Nativity, Star of Bethlehem Church, Holy Infancy, St. Anne's and the Edgeboro Church. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve, uh, conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision to, com to the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed and underemployed, those unable to afford housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, especially those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly, deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We give thanks for those who have died. As you sustain them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints, the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Once again, we'd like to take a moment to thank everyone 
who is able to continue to generously share your financial offerings with our community. Your generosity supports many ministries in our community and beyond. For those among us who may be unable to make financial offerings during this time, we thank you for your generous prayers and continued support for our ministries in numerous other ways. And we hope and pray that all people would feel blessed by the love of God and the love of one another during these challenging times. If you have not already done so, I invite you to prepare your elements for communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. God, our maker, redeemer, and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
the body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. I now invite those who have abstained from receiving Holy Communion to speak the prayer below. As those who have received this sacrament maintain silence for personal prayer and reflection on the grace that God pours out to us all. I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I always desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, I implore you to come into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life that is to come. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, We have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So tomorrow morning, we will worship in person at Light of Christ at 9, and following worship, we'll hold the first of our town hall meetings. Next week, our live stream worship will come to you from St. John's Windish Lutheran Church, beginning at 445 on Saturday. And then in person next week, on August 1st, I don't know how that is possible that we are talking about August 1st, But we are, and it will be at St. John's Windish, and there will be a town hall meeting after worship as well. And uh, I have to say, I just received some really good news. And congratulations to Tony Villani and his family. His grandson was born at 10.05 last night, and um, the baby's nickname is Rocky. And he was born at 7 pounds, 9 ounces, 21 inches long. And mom and baby and everyone are doing well. So congratulations to the extended Volani family. Tomorrow is the last day to bring in items for the in-gathering. Uh, we need personal care items and lotions. I think about 25 lotions are still needed. And I think we need about 15 more tubes of toothpaste. And the box will be at the here at Light of Christ. I want to thank Lynn Terry and her entire staff of lay ministers for conducting Vacation Bible School uh, last week. I understand it was amazing, and everyone uh, shared God's love and joy in learning. Uh, This week, on Sunday afternoon, the 36ers are hiking at the Woodlands Conservatory, and that's from 2 to 4. And at 6 p.m. on Sunday, we're going to be meeting with youth and parents to discuss the upcoming ELCA National Gathering, and that's for kids that are beginning ninth grade through uh, and in 12th grade for this academic year coming up. So please, uh, if that uh, 
If you're in that age group, come and bring your parents or guardians. Uh, I, the ELC gatherings are amazing. Uh, Tuesday morning at uh, 8 at the palace, the men's group is meeting and the staff is meeting at 9 via Zoom. We've got Christian uh, fellowship group at 7 uh, Wednesday morning via Zoom and uh, the Christian service workers, are they meeting? Yes, they are meeting yes. at 9 at Light of Christ. And then Thursday night, if you have any uh, um, energy left <laughs> after a full <laughs> week of stuff, the walking group's meeting at 7 o'clock at the Hanover Township Park. So uh, good to join it's them. It's a full week. It is a full <laughs> week. Who said summer was supposed to be, you know, <laughs> laid back? I, Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been Not in ministry <laughs> now 14 years as a rostered leader, and that has never been my experience. <laughs> so, I don't know how yours just, was. Just as strong in the <laughs> summer as in the winter. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know who made up that little lie about I'm that. not sure, but it's, <laughs> it is a lie. <laughs> oh, well, if there are uh, no further announcements... The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, join in our ascending song. Let us talents and tongues employ from the ELW 674. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.